To most of us, winter means one thing, difficult driving conditions. The Ministry of Transportation and Highways' first priority in winter road maintenance operations is to provide safe road conditions for the traveling public. To do this, the Ministry needs three essential resources. Manpower, equipment, and materials. Manpower must be trained thoroughly before beginning operations on the road. Operators must be familiar with winter attachments, operating procedures, safety practices, and the area's roads. District highways managers and road foremen should prepare a well thought out winter shift schedule for their areas. Equipment should be properly tested and adjusted. Of all the winter activities, sanding is presently the most expensive operation. Sand has become a costly material both to produce and purchase. Therefore, careful planning of material production, storage, usage and application is essential. The ministry standards for material preparation and application have been established to meet the average requirement in maintaining good winter driving conditions. These standards are derived from statistics collected in the field. They've been drawn up as guidelines to aid highways personnel in doing their job. This presentation will provide district highways managers, maintenance systems technicians, and district coordinators with a thorough understanding of material preparation and planning. The complete winter maintenance sanding presentation will reinforce the ministry standards and offer some tips and techniques for highways personnel on the preparation and application of winter sand. Ministry production of winter sand is usually done in the summer and early fall, well in advance of the winter season. Most areas benefit from a stockpile of sand mixed with salt. Salt mixed in with the aggregate prevents frost penetration into the stockpile, making loading and spreading easier. For optimum results, salt should be added in the quantity of 35 to 60 kilograms per cubic meter of screen sand, or no more than 5% salt to sand. Anything more than this is unnecessary and wasteful, because more than 5% salt in the mix may result in an equivalent light application on the road of straight salt. If the temperature is too cold for the salt to react, then the material is wasted. Note that during application of mixed sand and salt, the spreader gate on the unit is fully open, distributing a greater amount of material on the road than when spreading only salt, when the spreader gate remains closed. Make sure that the salt is kept free of contamination and moisture and that only the required amount is delivered to the pit for mixing. Crushed gravel can be used as a substitute for screen sand, particularly where pits have a large amount of oversized material. An extension on the hopper will eliminate excess spillage of material. Cost of production can be reduced by mixing the material at the same time as crushing it for stockpiling. This prevents double handling the material and can save considerable time and money if the equipment is available and operations are planned well. Crushed aggregate particles should not exceed 16 millimeters, but most of the material will be 13 millimeters or less. Preferably, particles should be angular so they will provide good traction and not roll off the road surface. The mixture of salt and aggregate is fed by conveyor into the screening plant where it passes through a series of screens of varying sizes. Aggregate particles that are too large will be discarded from the final mix. A conveyor stacker is recommended to stockpile the mixture because it reduces equipment costs and compaction of the material. Production costs rise when the material is trucked to a different location and equipment operating on the pile will increase compaction.
When using the stacker, care must be taken to prevent material segregation. This can occur when the conveyor is stationary, allowing the material to accumulate in a conical pile. Larger sized aggregate will migrate down the outside of the cone. This prevents the uniformity of material distributed on the road. Conveyor stackers are designed to move in an arc. Stockpiles can be built in lifts to limit material segregation. Producing as compact a pile as possible will limit the size of the surface area, reducing frost penetration problems. Districts should coordinate the use of the conveyor stacker to allow maximum production at minimum cost. To eliminate the possibility of digging into the ground and to slow down the leaching process if the situation permits, the stockpile could be put on an asphalt pad. Ideally, the stockpile should be located in a pit that is central to the road system. This allows a faster response to winter conditions and limits uneconomic dead haul time. However, it is recognized that material may have to be trucked from the production area to another location for stockpiling, so it'll be central for sanding operations. A system of protecting stockpiles from moisture intrusion is being tested using a hydro seeder to spread a water-resistant membrane coating over the pile. This will prevent the salt from leaching out over long periods of time. To summarize, the key points to remember in material preparation are salt should be added to screen sand in a ratio no higher than 5% salt to sand. Material should be mixed at the same time as the aggregate is crushed to prevent double handling. Districts should coordinate the use of the conveyor stacker to maximize production. And stockpiles should be centrally located to the area's road network.
The distribution of materials on the roads in winter conditions depends on well-maintained equipment that has been properly tested and operator knowledge of safety procedures, vehicle maintenance, and spreader calibration. In this section, we will discuss calibration, types of equipment, the electronic salt sand control system, and pre-trip vehicle inspection. Included are some operating tips that drivers and road foremen should find useful. Vehicle calibration should be done annually prior to winter operations to ensure that the equipment is capable of dispensing the appropriate quantity of material for various conditions to comply with ministry maintenance standards. Materials are dispensed by a conveyor spinner combination at a given control setting and RPM rate for a timed interval related to vehicle road speed. The preseason calibration process is the joint responsibility of the district coordinator, the road foreman, the mechanical foreman, and the training operator. Vehicle operators should be familiar with this process. Proper use of the equipment is the responsibility of the operators. Spinner to chain relationship and spinner rotation should be checked to ensure that sand hits the spinner in an area that gives the most even spread pattern on the road, providing coverage to both lanes. Spinners should be set to distribute sand in a band three to four meters in width along the center line of a two-lane road. When appropriate settings are determined, a calibration decal is made out and attached to the truck dashboard for operator reference when making applications. Generally, two types of equipment are used in winter sand application the tailgate sander and the body or hopper sander. The body sander unit, once put on the vehicle, usually stays on all season. The tailgate unit can be attached on a single axle dump truck, quickly converting the vehicle for applying winter materials. It was designed by the ministry to get greater use of the equipment in the winter season as it can be taken off or attached as required. The equipment attachments and adjustments in the field require good operating skills and some practice. Roger Remke, mechanical foreman from Prince George, explains the correct procedures for mounting and maintaining the tailgate unit with the use of a working model. The procedures, of course, have been simplified for demonstration purposes. Let's take a few minutes to talk about tailgate sanders. Langford constructed this tailgate sander in order that we can convert from a dump box to a spreader box very quickly. And it works very well if we take a few precautions. The first thing that we have to consider when we are attaching the sander to the truck 
is that we have to fasten it properly. Now, the tailgate sander fastens into the same bosses that hold the tailgate of the truck. What we have to be careful of is that we maintain the pins properly to lock it into position. Now, uh, if you don't make sure that those pins stay in place, sometimes what can happen as you're driving down the road, uh, frost heaves and that giving us a rough ride, those pins can actually bounce out. And what sometimes will happen is that you'll end, up, you'll end up with the tailgate on the road behind you, and because it's attached by a couple of hydraulic lines, you end up dragging this down the road behind you. And that is very embarrassing. So when you are putting this tailgate onto the truck, be sure that you lock the tailgate in position securely. Now, I'm purposely going to leave out the bottom pins for now, but make sure that all the pins are in place. Sometimes uh, these bottom pins can be, you can use a bolt in there and make sure that it's locked in place, double nutted in place so that it can't come out. The top one, the chain here, there is a chain that holds that pin in position so that you can't lose it. Now, what I would suggest is uh, short link that little piece of chain and wire it in position, okay? Some people uh, use bungee cords on there. That may be fine in warmer climates, but where it's very cold, the rubber doesn't perform well in cold weather, and I found it much better just to wire it into place, and then we have that thing secure. It's not going to get away on us. So point number one is make sure that it is mounted securely. The next thing to remember is that there is a conveyor chain in the back here that is driven by hydraulics. There's a hydraulic motor and a gearbox back here. Now, in that gearbox, there is a small amount of oil, about a liter. And any leaks there can cause damage if you don't catch it right away. So if you see leaks in that area of oil from the gearbox, be sure to get it fixed quickly. The other th point of maintenance back here is the conveyor chain is held in tension by uh, an idler that is spring-loaded. Be sure that those springs are kept free and lubricate those bearings, top and bottom, each shift. In order for you to control how much this thing discharged, besides the speed of the chain, there is a gate and a regulator on the back here. Now, your foreman will advise you as to how to regulate that, and you need to make sure that you maintain that in its proper position. And another feature of the tailgate sander is the spinner, which spreads the uh, aggregate on the pavement. And you'll notice that the spinner has a guard on it. That guard must be maintained in position whenever you use the sander. It is designed to prevent the small rocks in that from flying horizontally and hitting passing vehicles or vehicles that are following you. So even though sometimes if you're using wet material, it can cause that to plug up, uh, be sure you just clean it out and maintain that guard in place. Don't take it off and throw it away. Okay, so really the tailgate spreader box is very simple to operate and to maintain. The points are to, re to remember are make sure that it is locked securely in position and maintain the lubrication and the uh, lubricate daily the tensioning device. Okay? There is a problem that we sometimes get into as operators in certain uh, aggregate conditions it may be wet and wants to stick in your box. Now, I would like to give you a word of caution that we may have to get out and shovel a little bit once in a while to prevent damage to the vehicle for the simple reason that if we are trying to get that aggregate to flow into the sander, and it won't, and we decide that, well, let's just jerk this a few times, we are asking for trouble because, number one, the drive line is not designed to take harsh treatment like that. Okay, and the other thing is when your box is up in the air and you've got to load up to the front, it's very hard on your hinge pins on the truck itself. So with a word of caution, get out and shovel a bit. It may prevent downtime to the truck. Okay, if we follow these simple steps, of maintaining or securing the tailgate sander, making sure that the lubrication is done and don't jerk the load, uh, travel with the box lowered as much as you can, Again, uh, sometimes we're tempted to leave the box up in the air so that we have a continuous feed of material. Now, 
this can be dangerous because sometimes this may be a height hazard. Also, it again is this problem of severe wear on the hinge pins because uh, in that position, it's sort of like uh, riding in these double-decker buses or walking on stilts. The higher up you are, the less control you have. Okay, and if your box is up in the air like that and you come around a corner and it's a bit icy, your chances of controlling that vehicle are much less than if that box is down. Now, I don't mean it has to go all the way down, but if you maintain your box in a, a much lower attitude, you have better control over the vehicle. So with those words of caution, uh, the tailgate sander will do a good job for us. Many ministry vehicles with sanding units are now equipped with electronic controls known as the automatic salt sand control system. This electronic system is safer because the operator does not have to worry about discharge rates or continually adjust the hydraulics when driving. It's more efficient and cost-effective in regulating the flow of material because it reduces the risk of under or over application. It allows the vehicle operator to carry out the sanding or salting operation at various truck speeds in varying conditions without taking his eyes off the road. This greatly increases safety, allowing the operator full attention to potential hazards. The control console mounted on the dashboard of the vehicle is the operator's main control and selection panel for operating the unit. Switches for salt and sand in light, medium, and heavy application rates have been incorporated into the system for the many road conditions encountered during the winter season. The bright dim switch controls the brightness of the console lamps. Select bright for daylight use and dim for night operation. In the center position, the lights are off. The salt sand switch selects the mode of operation, depending on the type of load the vehicle carries and turns the unit on. Allow five minutes for it to warm up. The high, regular, low switch selects the distribution rate for the sand or salt mode. Different road conditions will require different application rates. This switch enables the operator to vary distribution during operation quickly and easily. The extra switch is used when changes in road conditions require temporary increases in distribution, for example on curves, steep grades, or intersections. Operating the switch in either direction will cause the conveyor to move at full speed for a period of 12 seconds. The brains of the system is the control unit, which should be mounted where the operator can easily see the digital display. The control unit logs the kilometers of salt or sand output while operating in the electronic mode. This display can be reset. Operators can either set the display at the beginning of the shift to log the total kilometers spread, or they can reset it every time they reload at the pit and tally the figures at the end of their shift. To begin operation, activate the hydraulic flow line which drives the chain by means of the manual control. The motor actuator unit feeds the signal from the control unit to the flow line, indicating the level and speed of operation selected. In operation, select gears to maintain engine speed in the upper end of the torque range to keep up adequate hydraulic pressure. When operating the sander in the electronic mode and selecting the desired switches, the chain speed responds automatically to changes in vehicle speed, ensuring the uniform application of material on the road. Operators should be familiar with manual controls and calibrations as well. The electronic unit can be bypassed and operated in the manual mode in the event of malfunction. The spreader calibration decal on the dashboard will provide the necessary information for settings. Should it be necessary to change to manual, pull off the road to reset the equipment. Do not attempt to make the change while driving. For manual operation of the hydraulic control valve, slacken the black knob on the motor actuator unit and slide it back. When the gears are disengaged, tighten the knob and operate the hydraulic valve manually using the dial assembly as a control. The dial corresponds to the calibration decal. 
When re-engaging the motor actuator unit to use the electronic controls, ensure the gears mesh properly when lining up the motor to the dial assembly. The dial can be re-engaged at any setting. This will not affect the timing of the computerized unit. Before leaving the yard at the beginning of your shift, there are a few simple procedures you should follow. Check the tires and the wheels for cracks and tightness. Ensure that the tailgate pins and safety chains are properly attached to avoid having them work loose. Clean off all the rear lights. Once you've done a check under the hood, clean the headlights and mirrors and always check that all lights are operational. Good safety practices are essential in all highway maintenance activities. Sanding is a high priority winter maintenance activity. The ministry uses half a million cubic meters of sand each year to maintain the winter surface condition standard established for each type of road. District management, road foremen, and vehicle operators share the responsibility for efficient day-to-day -day winter operations. In this part of the presentation on sanding, we'll discuss routing and scheduling, weather conditions, driving and safety, application rates and methods, and how to judge priorities.